Okay. So now we're just recording. Let me kind of switch over to. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Can you see my screen okay? Um, let me go back. Oh, did I lose you? Um, yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, well then just kind of, I guess we'll get started with a couple little things with this test, just kind of the, um, I guess, business before we get down to going over everything. So the test is, um, I believe it's an hour long um, time to get, just like the other test, it's the exact same format as the last test. Uh, 30 questions, multiple choice. Um, and it's only gonna, it's only gonna cover the, you know, everything since the last test. So it should be basically just volcanoes. Okay. Um, you, you won't need anything else. Um, trying to think, but it's kind of a 50, 50 split between, you know, the, the readings and quizzes and stuff and then the case studies. So like I said to you earlier, you know, probably Monday, Tuesday of next week, I'll, we'll have another one of these where we'll just maybe for 30 minutes, just talk about the case studies, what to know, what not, what, what's important, things like that. Okay. So um, and that, that should give you all you need. There's the two, the two study guides I've got posted. This one that I've got up right here, the, the PowerPoint. And then there's a very, very, I guess, um, broad one that's the PDF and it's just like what you should be looking at, what you should be studying. It's not any direct questions. It's more just to kind of guide your study. This one's kind of a little more in depth. Um, so I would recommend spending plenty of time going through making sure you know these questions and know the stuff on these slides. Um, so I did this, I put this, this presentation together a couple of semesters ago and I put it together while I was going through the test questions. So this is, pretty close to the test. Uh, they don't really change the tests too much. So, you know, this is all still relevant. This is all stuff that'll be on the test. Um, so without, with that, do you have any questions just kind of about layout and everything for the test or you feel pretty no. good about moving on? Moving on. All right, perfect. So let me pull this up into the presentation. Come on, maybe not wanting to give me a sec there we go okay oh sorry i'm having some problems here oh that's okay i have an old computer it's getting to be about time to it was probably time to replace about three years ago <laughs> <laughs> oh powerpoint kind of problem close Okay, well, give me a second while I open it up again. Thank you, Ty. <laughs> so then what we'll do in the meantime is we'll go over this one, the broad one. Um, just This is just kind of topics to study. And let me, okay, good. This opened up. I don't know why there's two. Okay, well, let's, we'll start here anyways. So... This is just kind of a broad overview of things you should be studying and things like that. So um, anything covered in the readings, guided labs, uh, quizzes, group presentations, any of that stuff is fair game for us to put for, for the test. Um, and so this is just kind of, this, this, this particular review here is kind of just a guide, like I said earlier, to things you should study. Uh, but it's not necessarily inclusive of everything on the test. Um, so it's a lot more general, but you know, make sure you know things like the types of volcanoes and the settings, the tectonic settings where they're at, uh, types of lava flows and the types of rocks, um, volcanic hazards and the best way to mitigate against them. Um, know temp how temperature viscosity and silica content influence a volcanic eruption, warning signs of an eruption, um, and then just study Mount Rainier and review your guided lab. If you remember, they had all those weird questions about, right, the volcano with like the distance from the volcano to the town and. Yes, because that was the most confusing for me because yeah. I thought 
the um, lab said follow the river, and then the test didn't. It just said, well, what's the distance? So I was like, which? And then they had a, just a straight line. So yeah. I was like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. And that one, it wasn't super scientific, right? It was just saying, okay, just do a straight line from here to here, and then yeah. we'll make a general thing. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of a um, like a more confusing lab. I'm not in love with it, but that's okay. We get through it, right? Yep. <laughs> and then on the case studies, make sure. So what'll be, you'll find that um, there'll be case studies for presented for Kilauea, Pinatubo, Mount St. Helens, and a, which I've always, I can never figure out how to say this one in Iceland, but I think it's he may. Um, and then Krakatoa and Tambora. And then you'll see here that on there is listed Santorini and Vesuvius. Those mm -hmm. ones aren't going to be presented by any group members, but if you go into the um, discussion class discussion board, or uh, I'm going to post an announcement with a link to these. But the 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 course has two presentations, uh, one for Santorini and one for Vesuvius, with everything you need to worry, study for that. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm going to post those links tonight so that you guys have that um, and can go over them. But just you know, these are the these are the case studies you'll need to know. Um, and I mean, you know, these last two paragraphs kind of give a good good overview of what you should know for these. So, you know the style of eruption. Um, you know, was it were there pyroclastic flows, lahars, or lava flows? Did the volcano alter the alter the landscape? You know, know the tectonic settings, things like that. You know. Okay. Um, a couple of other things to know, especially with these ones. This one's even more so uh, than probably the earthquakes. Is I would know what distinguishes each case study. So, and what I mean by that is each volcano has kind of like a unique thing about it. And so, uh, an example of this is Krakatoa, or Krakatoa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it could be pronounced either way. It was, it made the loudest sound ever heard on earth when it erupted. And so each volcano case study will have a little thing, something like that, that you should know. Okay. So for example, do you remember in your readings about Tambora and Joseph Smith and how when Mount Tambora erupted, it caused the year to, the earth to cool a little bit. And that's what made the Smith family move from Vermont down to New York. Oh. So lots of little things like that, and they should all be in the case study, all in the case studies. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to post links to all the materials that um, your peers have for each case study, and you mm -hmm. guys will be able to go in and see all the sources they had as well if you want to do a little extra, a little more in-depth studying. Okay. So I think that sums up this. Um, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Okay. So now let's see if I can get this slideshow to go. Uh, doesn't want to. Well, we can just go through each one, but let me try one more thing. Okay, here we go. Now we're ready. So this one, this this presentation now that I'm putting up here, this um, PowerPoint, this is actually a pretty good one. I, I like it at least, but again, I did make it. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that, but um, so this one, I built it off of the test. You know, it wasn't one where I went through the course, the material, and the readings. I actually just went, looked at all the test questions, and thought, and was like, okay, what what are the things they need to know? So this one's pretty good for that. So. I've got to move this bar. Maybe. Hazards. Okay, what are the hazards associated with volcanoes? Now, that's what it says, right? I've got a bar right along the top, so I can't <laughs> quite see the top one. So, what can you think of any of the hazards that you remember from the readings that are associated with uh, any of these volcanoes? I can't even think about science. <laughs> it's okay. Um, hazards. I mean, I'm living on a volcano island. I don't know. Uh -huh. 
Thank and you. What, are, what are some of the things? So, for example, when Kilauea erupted this last summer, um, what were some of the things that people were worried about? Um, okay, if I understand your question, um, what are the hazards associated with volcanoes? Like the the ash, yeah, mm -hmm. the um, air control, the the quality of air, mm -hmm. um, being able to get to um, your resources like food and shelter. Mm -hmm. So those type of things. Yeah, things like that. Perfect. So you've got this one. You talked about this your eruption columns. So this is going to be like your ash, your bombs, which are all tephra. These two indents, the bombs and ash should be indented one more. But, you know, all, the, all that material that's expelled out and, you know, lowers air quality and, you know, you know, in the case of bombs could hit you on the head and really do some damage. Uh -huh. You know, these are some, some hazards we have to worry about. Uh, can you think of any others that we've studied? Like any other things that like uh, the other things about volcanoes that could be really dangerous? Um, do we say the lava flow? Yeah, lava flow. Absolutely. Um, uh, see if that's right. uh, we got a gas. Volcanic gas. <laughs> there you go. Gas. Okay. Um, what else? Hmm. I'm trying to think of. I don't know. You did great. You did fantastic. So we've got volcanic gases, lava flows, like you said, in domes, which just these domes that form up as the lava is pushing the surface, the earth. You also have pyroclastic flows, if you remember those from the reading. Mm -hmm. And then landslides that you can get. Oh. And lahars. Lahars, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you remember the lahars, you know, from the, the guided lab. Um, do you remember, though... So kind of quick review for each one. Um, what, what is a lahar, do you remember? Lahar is what? I just remembered that was one of the answers on that last <laughs> test. <laughs> so think of it this way. You know, uh, you don't really have this in, in Hawaii. But like, think of like your classic volcano, uh, maybe like Mount Rainier or Mount St. Helens. And the top, you see these beautiful white snow and glaciers, right? Mm -hmm. And then as, as the volcano is preparing to erupt or erupting, there's a, you know, a sudden rise in heat, and it causes all that to melt. Oh, the mud flow, mud flow. That's exactly right, yeah. <laughs> it's that mud flow that comes down that's got you know, the trees, the mud, in some cases you know, bits of you know, hardened lava, you know, lava rock and stuff. And it moves down super quick. Um, these are really, really dangerous. So yeah, perfect. And they're a little different than landslides, right? These, this mm -hmm. a lahar is specifically caused by the melting of the water or the ice. The and ice, uh huh. The landslides, where, for example, you know, if you remember Mount St. Helens, when Mount St. Helens erupted, part of the mountain actually collapsed and slid down. That's a land, you know, that's what the landslide is, is where gravity's pulling it down. It's not necessarily because of things being melted. Okay. And then, do you remember what a pyroclastic flow is? No. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. So, it has to do with the eruption column. So you get all this ash and tephra, you know, all the tephra ex explodes and into the air and is up in the air and in suspension, you know, because like the ash is pretty light. But then more and more stuff gets up there and it's, it starts to cool. And as things cool, they actually get more dense. And so what happens is this, all this ash and stuff up in the air gets super, super dense and comes rushing back down towards the ground. And then it kind of rushes down the sides of the volcanoes. So you know, like when you look at videos of volcanoes, eruptions and stuff, you sometimes see that huge ash cloud racing down the side of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's, that's a pyroclastic flow. And why these are so dangerous is because these pyroclastic flows are superheated. So these things, um, I remember my geology professor, when I took this class um, almost 10 years ago, explained it this way, that as it comes down, in some cases, it's so hot that when you breathe it in, it instantly melts your lungs. So these are oh, really, wow. really hot clouds of ash and gases 
rip roaring down the side of the mountain. You know, they're going faster than Lahar. So, you know, I think he said once it's 60, 70 up into even over a hundred miles an hour. Okay. okay. So that's a good example of that. So these are great list of right here of the hazards. Let's go to the next. Any questions on any of these? No. Okay. So here's just some, we'll just go quickly over some basics with uh, volcanoes. So do you remember what the difference between volcanic and intrusive rocks are? Volcanic and intrusive rocks. Mm -hmm. Mm, let me think on a question. <laughs> You're good. I'll give you a hint, and this might help. Um, intrusive sounds like inside, and volcan volcanoes expel things. Mm. So um, volcanic rocks, I think I want to say... I don't know. I kind of feel like they are harder. <laughs> I don't know. Close. Intrusive rock. Intrusive. So think of it this way. I'll, I'll explain this one. This is kind of a harder one because it, I think there might be one or two questions in the guided lab about this, but it's not super well covered. And I know there's questions on the test about this. So okay. what a volcanic rock and intrusive rocks that there's really actually not much difference between them. They're the same types of rocks, but there is one, one big difference, and that is volcanic rocks are when are the cooling of the magma or the of the lava on the surface of the earth, where intrusive rocks formed as the magma cooled inside the earth. So it crystallizes. Yep. Yep, so think of it this way. Volcanoes expel things, so everything that's expelled and hardens are volcanic rocks. Okay. Ex and everything that's inside and crystallizes or hardens are intrusive rocks. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good one. And then just make sure you know the different types of volcanic rocks. Um, I think that's on the slides later on, so we'll address that in a okay. few more minutes. Okay, so and then the next question is, why are volcanic gases important with regards to eruptions? Now this one's a little harder too. I know. <laughs> uh, well, can't the gases happen like days before? Aren't they like um, an indication that the volcano is going to erupt? Yeah, you're right. Uh-huh. That's that's perfect. They're they're kind of a telltale sign, right? That things are going going south quick under underground. So, and there's a reason that they're that that's that's important. So you've got your magma, which is in which is down in in the under the, under the surface under the surface, right? In the volcano in the magma chamber, mm -hmm. and if you have a lot of gases inside of it inside your magma it's building a lot of pressure so think about it like if you've got you know a can of soda mm -hmm. and you you just open it without shaking it it kind of it, you know it releases some pressure but you know when you shake it really hard and then open the can of soda it sprays everything everywhere because all the gases which increases the pressure right does that uh -huh. kind of make sense Yes. It's the exact same principle with the volcano, actually. So the volcano, as more and more gases come, it builds more and more and more pressure in the, in the subsurface inside the volcano. And then eventually what happens is either the gases just kind of get let out through cracks, you know, and vents, or you have catastrophic failure somewhere. This is when an eruption happens. So Think about it, you know, like the top of the mountain blows off and then it, exp it expels all the magma or all the lava and all the ash and tephra and all that stuff. So 
volcanic volcanic gases are kind of what cause the ex, it to be so explosive. Okay. Um, what about the bombs? Okay, so that's great. Lava bombs. So if you think about it, when a volcano erupts, it shoots stuff like everything, not just. You know, it shoots the rock, uh, the, you know, the, the walls of the mountain into the air. It shoots snow, ice, trees, you know, whatever's on the mountain. But then it also shoots the lava up into the air, right? Mm -hmm. It's coming out. And so sometimes, a lot of times, a, a good, most of the lava um, crystallizes, well, it's basically little tiny droplets. Just because you know, the explosion is so forceful, it just kind of sprays it. And so that forms the ash, but sometimes you'll get, you know, wads of lava flying through the air. If you think of it like tennis ball sized wads of molten rock. And as it flies out, it cools and it turns into kind of these tennis ball teardrop shapes of rock, shaped rocks that fall to the earth. Those are the bombs. They're the kind of the, the, the big, the balls of lava that have cooled that are falling from the sky. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then remember, this is important too. Remember, tephra uh, is everything that's expelled. Oh, and everything. So it, that's not, not necessarily like the lava, but everything that's expelled into the atmosphere. So that's going to be your ash, your lava bombs, you know, that type of stuff. Oh, yeah. I got that question wrong. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's that I, remember that. I think you might have, might have even emailed me about that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. No, it was a tricky one because that one, it was. It, I think it was just the way it was worded, and it always uh -huh. catches people. Okay, and then vents. Vents are where kind of the pressure is being released from the volcano. Like, if you think about it, the little cracks that go into the ground where some of those gases can escape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes these vents also, when an eruption actually starts, they'll start actually shooting out some lava as well. Now, I, I also thought that with the vents, mm -hmm. It's not necessarily, you wouldn't necessarily have an eruption. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's great. And you, a great example of that is, you know, Kilauea, where you've got vents that release gases periodically, but, you know, no lava or magma or anything, you know, nothing exciting like that is happening. Okay. And you remember the difference between magma and lava? Um, I know lava is... Hot, molten, mm -hmm. semi-fluid rock, and magnum is uh, I don't know. <laughs> You're super close, and it's kind of this is kind of a tricky one. Magma and lava are the exact same thing, except magma is the hot, semi-fluid molten rock inside the volcano. Inside. Lava is the hot, molten semi-fluid rock outside the volcano. Oh, that makes a big difference. Outside. Yeah. Uh huh. One, so magma's inside, lava's outside. Okay. All right. Any that questions on any of this? Nope. Got it. Perfect. You're doing great. Oh, now let's see if I can get. Okay. So here we go volcanic rock types. And it's okay if you don't remember any of these, that's fine. But do you remember any types of volcanic rocks? No. <laughs> That's fine. So there's three. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember those now. <laughs> yeah, you remember these I now? I pulled it up, yeah. Yeah, so there's the rhyolite, andesite, and basalt. And right. with the basalt, there's two types of basalt. Um, so the, this is what they're called when they're, exp you know, the lava is cooled, and these are different types of the, the rocks. And they all have to do with the composition of, of the crystals in them. And I'm not going to bore you to death with that. Okay. <laughs> Well, essentially, it's like, you know, the higher amount of silica in them. But the thing that you should know, is good to know is here, is these types of rocks form from different types of volcanoes. Okay. So, rhyolite, this one up here, this mm -hmm. forms from typically those, remember Pliny in eruptions? And we talked about them in, in the reading. So these are those those are those huge eruptions that expel, you know, the the, the gases and the tephra, you know, 
you know, it's almost basically kilometers into the atmosphere and they affect, you know, wide swaths of land. So this is like Mount St. Helens and those types of volcanoes. Those really, really, well, th right, those, those types are really, really big ones. So rhyolite okay. comes from those super explosive volcanoes. Okay. And then andesite, well, we'll go do, we'll do basalt first. Then basalt comes from the less explosive ones, kind of like Hawaii, Mount Kilauea, uh, you know, and, and Mauna Kea. So that's that lava that like that super famous one that you see rolling down the sides of the mountain, or you know, like the beautiful fire fountains where you just see kind of the lava spattering out of these holes, and you know, basically all the lava you see where you're from. <laughs> okay. So that's basalt, and this stuff isn't super explosive, um, right? I mean, because you guys can live on Hawaii without having to worry about the whole island blowing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still got its own dangers. And within basalt, there's two types there's of lava. There's pahoehoe and a'a. Uh -uh. mm -hmm. And pahoehoe is that ropey one. You know, I'm sure you've seen it as you've been around Hawaii. It's that one that looks almost like waves. As it's cooled. No, I haven't seen them. <laughs> no, we'll do this. Normally, I like to show these. Let's see here. Okay, here we go. It's this type of lava that cools that way. Kind of oh. that ropey texture. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this is one type of basalt, pahoy hoy. And then there's uh, there we go this type of one where it's just like these jagged rocks like the the flows actually look more like rocks they're oh, not flowing okay, so much yeah I see those flowing. all the time uh -huh. yep yep yeah so those are the two types um let's get this back up oh that's the wrong one uh, let's see. there we go okay So those are the two types. And this stuff is really thick, um, but or it, it's pretty thick. You see it, right? You know, moves su doesn't move super, super fast. I mean, it can flow down the mountain pretty quick. But, I mean, you've seen it. You've seen videos of it. And then there's this comes, then there's the one in between called andesite. And that's kind of a between these super, super ultra explosive volcanoes and then the volcano is more like Hawaii. So they're still explosive volcanoes. They come from still explosive volcanoes, but not as explosive as other ones. And um, it's kind of an intermediate between the two. Does that make sense? Yes. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna, this, is, uh, this is kind of a, something you should know too. When we think of rhyolite, we often think, oh, Rhyolite would come from a volcano like Mount St. Helens. But um, rhyolite would more come from a volcano like Yellowstone. You know, those big super volcanoes you hear about in the news every once in a while? Mm -hmm. So that's more like ry rhyolite. Andesite is actually more from mountains like Mount St. Helens. And oh. so think of it on, in levels of explosiveness. So rhyolite only comes from the biggest worst types of explosions you can get. Andesites, you know, kind of the middle, not, not as bad, and then basalts, the not, you know, even, even less explosive. Okay. All right, great. And that kind of answers these, you know, this one, can you compare and contrast them? Mm -hmm. And um, one thing, what causes the different levels of explosiveness, and I mentioned this earlier, is what's called silica content. It's just a mineral um, that is in the magmas. More silica means more explosive. So rhyolite is high in silica, andesite is intermediate amounts of silica, and basalt is very low in silica. Okay. So now, what is viscosity and how does it affect lava slash magma and volcanoes? Do you remember what viscosity is? Um, 
It's is it the force? Close. It's not force. I think it, it has to do with the liquids. Oh, the way they flow. Exactly. It's kind of how thick it is. So think about it. The way I like to remember viscosity is it's is its level oh. of syrupiness. I don't oh. know if that makes sense. Yeah, thick or sticky or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a high, a very viscous fluid or a very viscous viscous material is going to be very thick. So think, you know, like cold, really, really cold syrup or honey. Oh, mm -hmm. and then a really a, a, a material that's very is has very low viscosity is going to be really runny. So like, you know, when you heat up syrup or honey and it gets, you know, super runny, almost like water. Well, lava and magma, you know, they flow and so they have viscosity. Some magmas are thicker and more viscous, so more syrupy than other magmas. Will so we go ahead. need to know the difference? Yeah, and I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay. <laughs> so the way that it affects lava, magmas, and volcanoes is this. Not only, you know, I said rhyolite, andesite, and basalt, the level of explosiveness is affected by the silica content. Mm -hmm. It is also affected by how viscous it is. So if you think about it, if you're shaking the can and you're building pressure, would a more viscous or more syrupy material be more explosive or a less viscous, less syrupy material be more explosive? <sighs> what one would hold the pressure the best? Would accumulate more pressure, I guess. It, it would seem, I don't know, it seemed like the um, thicker it is, the slower it is, but mm -hmm. the yeah, exactly. The most explosive. Yeah, that's right. The thicker and slower it is, the harder it is for those gases to escape, the more explosive it is because it acquires significantly more pressure. So what that means with regards to these rocks is rhyolite is, a, is more viscous when it's lava is more viscous than andesite, which is more viscous than basalt. Oh. So the more explosive the volcano, the more viscous its lava is or its magma is. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Good. Any questions here? No. Okay, you're doing great. Okay. And this one's what are the different types of volcanoes? So I mentioned this a second this ago. Yellowstone, and you mentioned Mount St. Helen, and mm -hmm. you mentioned um, Hawaii is more Bassett. Yeah. So do you remember? There's those, those are specific volcanoes, and there's different types of volcanoes. They, they all kind of fall into categories. Do you remember what they are? You talk about super explosive or like that, intermediate? Uh, close. So I'm talking like, I'll give you an example, like straddle volcano. Oh, um, straddle, oh, okay. Okay, I got straddle in my brain now. <laughs> okay, yeah. Strata. Strata volcano is... Um, Okay, I remember the strata volcano, but I can't quite place it. Place it. Um, I forgot which one we we had. The strata volcano was like the last one we. I thought St. Helens was a strata volcano. Yeah, you're right. Uh huh. So strata volcanoes are the big explosive. You know, the big pointy mountains that explode and you know cause all sorts of problems. I don't really remember the rest of them. That's fine. I've got them up on the screen now. So you've got okay. strata volcanoes or composite volcanoes. They, they go by either or. Um, then you have, we'll do shield volcanoes. And Hawaii, you know, Mauna Kea uh, is a big shield volcano. So those are those big volcanoes that are the, they're huge. They're just these gentle inclines um, up into this giant, you know, big mountain it's like kind of looks like a shield i don't know if that makes sense i'm going to show you a picture 
to give you, okay. it's a little easier to see. Okay, so here's a good picture of a big shield volcano. You see how it's super gentle slope going all the way up? Mm -hmm. These are those big shield volcanoes, the kind of that sh shape, and it kind of looks like a shield. Um, another good one. Um, do I like this figure here? Uh, yeah, it'll work. So then you can see here this one A up here. This is a shield volcano, just comes up uh -huh. real gentle. The layers build out, gentle slopes. These things are huge. The largest mountain in the world is a shield volcano, and oh. that's actually. Mauna Kea, that's Hawaii. Hawaii is the largest mountain in the world. If you go from actual base start of the mountain, which is the sea floor. So just, you know, big gentle slopes. Okay. Then mm -hmm. you've got strata volcano, which we were talking about, which is this one down here. And you can see big pointy, looks like a big, your kind of classic volcano. Oh. Then you've got what are called cinder cones. That's this one here, this B. They look kind oh, of okay. like the stratovolcano, yes. volcano, right? That kind of pointiness. But these are actually a lot smaller. As a matter of fact, we had the, go ahead. I was saying, we had to measure a cinder cone before, correct? I think so. Is it the cone um, we had to measure? I think you're right. So here is a cinder cone volcano. You can see it kind of sticks up, but it's not huge. This is a road down here. Oh. So they're not super, super huge. And these ones, they expel, I mean, wait for it, they expel cinders. <laughs> Imagine that. We're real <laughs> creative. So it's just ash cinder. They'll expel some lava as well, but it's mostly just cinders. Oh. And they're not nearly as explosive, right? You, you see how small they are. Here's another one. You know, they're not huge. Mm -hmm. to whereas you know let's take a comparison with the strato, vol strato volcano i mean all of a sudden you know here's a strato volcano <laughs> there's a huge difference in scale you know this is a whole mountain okay 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 Sorry, I have allergies this time of year, so I'm kind of sniffly here. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now, and then there's lava domes. That's just these big domes where the lava pushes up and creates this big, I'll show you a picture of that one too. Always, you know, these I always end up flipping over to Google a lot and just showing pictures because it's so much easier to remember something when you can put an image to it. So, right. you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, what it sounds like, a big dome <laughs> that has lava in it. Mm. So um, these can actually occur on, volcan on strata volcanoes. Uh, I think, yeah, this one right here, this one, I believe, is Mount St. Helens. Mount St. Helens has a dome forming in it right now. Oh. So they can form up in there up on other volcanoes. Just like cinder cones can be found on other volcanoes too. Cinder cones can be found on shield volcanoes. The more you study the earth, the more you realize it's just messy and doesn't make any sense. <laughs> now it's um, 4.42. You were saying about 30 minutes to an hour. I don't want to take too much of your time. No, we'll go through this whole presentation. Okay. For this one, for the test reviews, I go through uh -huh. the whole presentation regardless of time. Okay. That way everybody has it. You know, the other stuff we'll, 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 we'll keep a little shorter, but this is, you know, kind of, I want to get through all this material so you guys have it to kind of help you. Okay. Um, Given examples of each, perfect. So then there's the eruption styles. And I know this is probably seems like drinking from a fire hose, but there's four eruption styles. There's called Strombolian, Vulcanian, Plinian, and Hawaiian eruptions. And actually in one of your emails, you, you talked a little bit about, I think it was from you, 
we were talking, yeah, because it's about the tephra. Um, is we were talk, we talked a little bit about Plinian and Vulcanian eruptions. And so what I'm going to do real quick, this is what are some characteristics of each eruption and what are some examples of each type of eruption. The next couple of slides, I break down each one of these, the Strombolian, Vulcanian, Plinian, and Hawaiian eruptions. So we'll just go through those right now. Okay. So this is the Strombolian. So this is where huge clots of lava come out from the summit of a crater to form these big, beautiful, luminous arcs through the sky. Um, these go on, these are basically cinder cones pretty much. Um, and they, they happen on the slopes of the, the, um, of a volcano, of a cinder cone, thing like that. So these things are small. Let's see if I can find you a picture here. Strombolian. That's a Strombolian eruption right there. Very beautiful. Oh, that is pretty. Yeah, almost like a firework if you will. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of struggle and you can see like they look, they don't look super, super scary. They don't look like, you know, imminent death kind of deal like some of these other ones, but they, you know, because it's more just this beautiful thing. It's sm significantly smaller in scale. You know, this might only be, you know, two, 300 feet, sometimes significantly less. So not a super big deal. These ones. Now, these are the ones that you always see on like National Geographic with the geologist and all the the reflective suit going up and collecting the lava samples from. Okay, so let's go back here. Next, we've got a volcanian eruption. In this one, you have dense clouds of ash that and gas explode from the crater and rise thousands of feet above the peak and they'll affect kind of the local region as ash is carried into the atmosphere. So, you know, these are these ones that, you know, they're, they're putting out a lot of ash uh, and a lot of, a lot of tephra. Now an example of a volcanian eruption would be all the ash and tephra coming from a cinder cone. Let's see mm. if I can get you a picture here as well. Cinder cone. I can spell volcanian eruption. There we go. So look at like like this. You see all this ash coming up, mm -hmm. rising a ways. You know, great. Looks, you know, a little, you know, significantly larger scale than the Strombolian eruption. And this whole region is gonna have ash fall and stuff like that from this cloud that's gonna kind of eventually plateau and spread out and just drop ash in the area if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, the next one is Plinian. And, and these ones, Vulcanian and Plinian, are really easy to confuse. The, the difference is scale. So again, large quantities of ash-laden gas are violently erupted and form these huge mushroom clouds going high into the atmosphere. Um, so let's show you a picture, and this will be, be a lot easier to see. So I mean, it sounds pretty similar to the that one, but this is like, this is a, a Plinian eruption, where you've got all this clouds up here. This is all ash up in here. Oh. Um, let's find another one. Like, this is a big Plinian eruption. I mean, it looks like the whole mountain is in the air now. Hmm. So does that kind of make sense? It's all scale. Yes. Perfect. The scale. And a great example of a Plinian eruption is Mount St. Helens. You know, Mount St. Helens was so explosive, it shot ash super high up into the atmosphere that my hometown, which is hundreds of miles away, had severe ash in Idaho, had severe ash fall from an eruption over in Mount St. Helens, Washington. Mm. So, you know, it's not just the local region. It's, you know, it's affecting large large swaths of land here's another good one this i like this figure this shows a good example of it so this is a good example of, you see the mountains down here it's probably about mm -hmm. this big oh, i see it and you can see how much ash has been expelled so if you can kind of keep that 
in your mind that it's scale, it'd be easy for you to, to differentiate them. And again, okay. example of the Pliny interruption, a great example is Mount St. Helens. Got it. And then there's the Hawaiian style eruptions. And no brainer, um, the eruptions in Hawaii are kind of the model for this. So kind of everything you see in Hawaii can begin as fissure along fissures or fractures that serve as these vents. Um, you get this molten incandescent lava that's coming out of the fissure and feeds these beautiful streams that flow down the mountain. You know, just like what you see in Hawaii where you got these rivers of lava running down into the ocean. Mm. So pretty, pretty easy. Um, you can get lava lakes there. So, you know, I think, do you, you know, I don't know if you're familiar, but you know how um, Kilauea has a lava lake, a lake of lava on it. No, I haven't been to that one. Yeah. So there's a lake that, you know, crater uh, that's filled with molten lava. And it's just this crater of constantly molten boiling lava. And it looks like a lake of lava, literally. So that's kind of, kind of diff that's all four of them. And I, I think that kind of makes sense. Do you have any questions on any of these? No. Okay. And then here's one. This is kind of the case studies. What was the eruption in the style? And there, there is a typo on this. I always forget to fix. I don't know why. But Himea or Hime, I don't know, the Iceland one down there that's third from the bottom. Mm -hmm. It says Strombolian. You could put Strombolian, but the correct thing is it's more of a Vulcanian eruption. So we've got Mount Pinatubo, Krakatoa. These are big Plinian eruptions. You've got Kilauea, which is a Hawaiian type. And you've got Vesuvius, which I, that's another typo. I have Plinian here. Um, mm. Excuse me, Vesuvius was Plinian. Santorini, I believe, was um, actually, oops. Uh, Santorini was actually a um, Vulcanian as well, I believe. So there's two titles here. Um, okay. Hopefully people listen to this and we listen to the review. I'll, I'll post a, a note um, on the, uh, in an announcement as well. But so just make sure you know the different eruptions types. Uh, they should be in the presentations as well with the, your peers put out. Um, so yeah. And then case studies, know what happened, what types of rocks were formed, what type of eruption it was, and by what type of eruption I'm talking about. Was it Vulcanian, Plinian, you know, what we just talked about. Key characteristics of the event, geological, social, economic, you know, any of those. Then impact of the eruption and any other unique information for the event. And that kind of concludes this set of PowerPoints. Yep, that's the last one. So do you have any questions on any of these? Any so of these when you say any other unique information, that's kind of broad. It is. When you get the case studies, it will make a lot more sense. Oh, okay. So here's a good ex another good example. So remember how I mentioned Krakatoa being the loudest sound ever heard on Earth mm -hmm. when it erupted? Stuff like that. Oh, um, okay. Another good example is actually the same volcano, Krakatoa. Um, it expelled a lot of ash into the atmosphere and it actually caused sunsets to be different for a number of years. They're all of a sudden way more vibrant, way more, a lot more reds and yellows and purples in them as the ash was still in the atmosphere. So the sunlight was filtering through this ash at evening. And this had a major effect on European art. So, uh, give you here. Nope, the cream, the screen. It's this painting right here, it's a really famous one, I'm sure you've seen it, um, was painted after a number of years after, um, a few years after the eruption of Krakatoa. And it, these, this lighting on the horizon, they, some scholars think that in, the, the lighting was inspired by the unique sunsets that came from the eruption of that volcano. So it actually influenced um, European art. Oh, it an impact on European art. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. things like that. And you'll see them in the case studies. Okay. So that's kind of the stuff I'm talking about. Just those unique things where you're like, oh, wow, that's kind of different. I'd never thought a volcano 
would have that effect, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? No, not at this time. <laughs> okay, as you study, if you have any, shoot me an email. Um, more than happy to answer them. If you want to, you know, have another online meeting like this, we can do that too, just as another one on one. We can talk about things, any questions you have. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to try and do a, a, one of these next week. This one will be shorter at the beginning of the week just to go over the case studies. So, okay. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. Oh, I'm glad you came. Um, I hope this is helpful to you. And I'm going to post this as well. So if you want to rewatch it just for more, you, you can't quite remember how I explained something. Mm -hmm. It'll be, it'll be um, on, on learning suite for you. Okay. I'll definitely go back and watch. Okay. But I did keep good notes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I heard you writing over there. So <laughs> I'm not too worried. And you know, one thing I found is in, in all my time teaching is those that attend the reviews have a little less hard. It's a little easier. The test is a little easier for them. So you know hopefully that that continues to be the trend it's not because i'm a particularly great teacher it's just because you know it's it's always helpful to hear the information not just read it you know um also if you ever want extra credit especially after the test all you have to do is email me i'll, okay. I'll give you, you know i'm i i know i know the tests are hard and there's nothing i can do to change that so what i try to do is I try to give, you know, if you want extra credit opportunities, I'll give it to you. Okay. So, and sometimes like, for example, with this last test, if things don't work out really well to either get a review or whatever, sometimes I'll even open the test back up for people to take a second time. So, you know, if Oh, you, and I yeah. did see that you said you were going to open it up, but I didn't see it open. Did okay. Try again. I reopened it. I double checked it last night. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because I saw your I saw your post, um, your question, and so I went and double checked, and I double checked, changed a few things, so it should still be open. It you should just be able to access it from the same place where you access the test the first time. Okay. Yeah, I didn't look at it today. Yeah. I if it if it doesn't open for you, just shoot me an email, and we'll get okay. it figured out. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye.